You're listening to The Scrimmage with Daniel Hargrove and Justin Domashevitz. All right, Justin, it's now time for our Oli Penn Real Estate Historical Athlete of the Week. And I got to say, I'm not going too far back in history, but I am going back to one of our favorite athletes. You and I have both talked about this person a ton over the years. And when we were doing our first iteration of the show, she was one of our favorite athletes as well. And that is Jordan Spradlin. And... It's really, I'm giving an update of what she's currently doing because she is still an athlete and her career has yet to be set. And sadly, it's taking a break with spring sports getting canceled this year as she is a track athlete. And that is a spring sport in the NCAA. She is a a thrower at the University of Arizona and she redshirted her freshman year, and uh, but in 2019, she made in the outdoor events. She made six appearances. She opened the series, the season at the Willie Williams Classic College, where she placed second in the discus throw with a mark of 45.84 meters, and that was to open the season. And she took second. Um, She marked a personal record of 50.08 meters in the district throw to finish sixth at the Triton Invitational, and she marked another personal record of 13.86 meters in the shot put to take fifth at the Desert Heat Classic. So, I mean, these are all top finishes in in just her, her first year of real experience in 2019. So... She's doing an excellent job. She's definitely making the harbor proud. And that was in the outdoor events. In the indoor events, uh, she competed in five. She finished ninth at the Larry, some weird last name, Invitational. Um, She had 13.84 meters in the shot put. She threw a personal record mark of 14.36 meters in the shot put to take second at the Texas Tech shootout. And she concluded the season at the MPSF Indoor Track and Field Championships where she threw a mark of 13.92 meters to finish in the top 20. So, I mean, as expected from one of our favorite athletes from around the area, she's gone on to college at Division I NCAA high competition, and she is definitely making us all proud there. Well, I spent several years working in the newspaper business locally, whether that was as a sports stringer for the Daily World or a, or a reporter for the Vidette. And during the time that I worked at the Vidette, which is a local Montesano newspaper, Jordan was, if not the athlete that I had most contact with, it was definitely she was the one of the ones that I had some of the most contact with because she played multiple sports. She was an MVP in every sport she played in. And she basically was just the example of what you would like your children to strive for if you have children who are athletes because she was well-rounded. She is extremely well-liked. She is she was a 4.0 student, I believe, all the way through high school. Um, you know, incredibly intelligent, incredibly polite, incredibly respectful. Just she's the kind of person that I had no doubt that when she moved on from high school, Jordan was going to go succeed in whatever she wanted to do. Um, I remember that I covered all of her different sports and in track and field in the throwing events, she just had no competition locally. She blew everybody away. I do remember though, cause Daniel, you and I of all those sports are by far most into basketball and yeah. Jordan it was an incredible volleyball player as well in high school. Um, She's very strong and solidly built, but she could jump and spike the ball over the net in a way that was like really incredible to watch her athleticism to be able to do that. But I remember when she first told me that she was planning on playing or she was planning on doing throwing events and track and field in college. I was like, oh, 
You're not going to play <laughs> basketball? <laughs> but Jordan at like, you know, six foot one or whatever she is and being able to roll through all the competition in the post in high school, it might have been a little bit tougher to translate into college. Although I think if she had decided to play college basketball, she would have been successful. Track and field throwing events was like, it's perfect for her. And she also loves it. The only thing that she didn't like about it was it didn't have the same kind of team dynamic that the other sports did. And sometimes she missed her teams. She also played um, fast pitch through her entire childhood until junior high. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And she was a really good fast pitch player, but she had to drop that sport um, when she got and she started having to choose different things. Um, And fast pitch and track and field are in the same season. So uh, she decided to stick with track and field. I had no doubt that she would be incredibly successful. And, you know, if there's any young athletes out there, junior high kids, high school kids, you want an example of how to behave, how to treat other people, how to focus on your studies and how to give everything you have to what's in front of you at the moment, the sport that's in front of you in the moment. Jordan is a fantastic example of that. Absolutely. A four-time All-State selection, four-time MVP out of Montesano High School. And I'm assuming that they're only listing the track things because we know she was an MVP in other sports as well. And uh, she holds the Washington shot put record with 14.74 meters. So, I mean, how could you not look at that for an athlete of the week historical or whatever because and i remember too the amount of uh grace that she held coming out of basketball games because as we know it's officiating is a really hard job in basketball and the easiest thing to do is to not call fouls when one player is bigger and stronger than everybody and she would come out of games Darn near bloody and bruised. And still, I don't remember her ever losing her temper on the basketball court. And to come out of those with 20 points, 20 rebounds, as basically we started calling the 2020 a Jordan Spradlin after that year because (laughs) that's just what she did. And to come out of it with scratches, blood, bruises. And I don't think I ever remember her losing her cool once in those situations. No, I don't think losing her cool is in her DNA. Although I don't know her outside of sports very well, but you know, when we talk about in basketball and how hard officiating is, um, you know, I don't even remember her seeming frustrated or annoyed by officiating. In fact, she told me one time I asked her about it after a game one time and she pretty much said, well, you know what? Their job is really hard. Sometimes if there's something early in the game, I might mention it to them like really passively or I'll make a little joke. But she wanted to have good relationships with the officials. There was one game in particular, Daniel, you and I broadcasted this game. I believe it was a district championship game and it was against La Center. And I think we went, did we go down to Forks for that game? No, it wouldn't be Forks. Um, or, uh, be, Kelso. We went down to Kelso for that game. It it would have been at Kelso. Yes. yes, that's what I was trying to come up with. Kelso. Another blue and yellow school. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, and that game was extremely physical. And in that particular game, you know, we we tried our best not to hammer the officials <laughs> on the broadcast. But Jordan is so strong that people could hammer. her her left and right and hit her from both sides and it would not affect her because of how strong she was and she got fouled like crazy she was getting hit in the face she was getting hit across the back of the head and she wasn't getting any calls but then if she did something on the other end then she would get a foul called on her and of all of the time that was the only time ever in the history of me covering her for four years during high school sports that I felt like she even had a look on her face that was like, what do I do here? But even then, she never got mad. She never yelled at an official. She never blamed an opponent. She just was like, she was looking at her coach like, what can I do differently to prevent this from happening? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. It was like, look, I'm doing my best I can here. I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do when I'm having people hang all over me. And 
I mean, as we know, we've seen some Le Center teams that have had absolute battles with Montesano yep. and Elma in girls basketball. I mean, Le Center has been an excellent program down there. And so we have seen some fierce battles. Two of our favorite players played in that game, actually, because Jordan Spradlin, not only one of our favorites, but somebody who it's kind of weird how much I come back to it is Katie Witten, who played for that La Center team. Didn't we find and out her name's pronounced Caddy? No, no, we spelled Caddy. We thought it was Caddy. That was a typo. Oh. I found out later that it was spelled with one T. So we called her Caddy for an entire playoffs, <laughs> but it's Katie Witten. And she is about, I mean, you couldn't find two more opposite players because Jordan Spradlin was a post player, super strong, bigger than, stronger than everybody. And Katie was, uh, what, five, five foot? foot? Yeah. Maybe. Tiny. Maybe. And yet one of the most fierce players that we've ever seen. And the battles that we saw between those two teams were amazing. Because I, I think the thing that stood out with Katie was like, she's, and any time that there's a player on the floor that is literally smaller than everyone else, you're kind of like, oh, look at that little guy or something like that. But the level of fearlessness that Katie played with was really incredible. And also she was incredibly skilled basketball player in high school and yeah. she totally ran her team and they had, they did have size on that La center team. So she kind of ran the point and was incredibly athletic and uh, versatile from, you know, playing on the perimeter. But uh, that was like you said, battles between Montesano and La center uh, big time. And when I talked about the La center team, you know, I wasn't trying to make it seem like they were, you know, purposely being flagrant. I think they no. were trying to play the game. Well, first of all, whenever you're trying to stop someone like Jordan, you get overly physical because you have to. And yeah. in basketball, you push the limits of the officiating. You you do what the officials will allow you to do. So they were doing what the officials would allow them to do. And it just happened in that game. It happened in that game so much to the point that afterwards I went and talked to Jordan and I was like, man, I couldn't believe it. I'm so, so sorry watching the watching the way the officials called this game. And she sort of just laughed it off. Like, oh, yeah, thank you. She just it was like almost an afterthought to her, at least publicly in that moment. Yeah, it again, it speaks to her character as well. And yeah, I mean, those games were so much fun to watch and cover. Like, I'm going to remember those for a long time. I probably creeped out. Uh, Katie Witten a couple years later actually because her <laughs> sister Bethany played for the team and I saw her in the stands and I like after the game or before the game or something I went over and I was like hey you used to play for La Center right and she was like yeah and I was like you were one of my favorite players to watch <laughs> I, I loved watching you play and I was like "Where? what are you doing now and she actually went on to lower Columbia to play basketball too but I'm going to stop talking about random other people. Uh, Jordan, uh, Jordan Spradlin is our Ole Penn real estate athlete, historical athlete of the week. And uh, can we please pray for sports to come back so we can have normal athletes of the week? Because I love talking, <laughs> diving into history, but man, I miss sports. We all do. <laughs>